guys make sure that you subscribe to the channel because guess what the channel competition i've decided i'm going to run every single month so what that means is that if you go and hit that subscribe button down below and leave a comment anywhere on any video on the channel it doesn't matter what video it is and i get a notification you automatically get entered into the channel competition and at the end of the month well the start of the next month so the first of october basically we're now in september so on the first of october i will announce the winner and the winner will get free access to my new networking strategies course these are the strategies that i have used to connect and build relationships with amazing people all over the world and bring them onto my youtube channel to interview and to add value to you hi hustlers welcome back to the show i have an absolutely amazing show here for you guys tonight and joining me today is uh, somebody who has done lots of different things she is a transformation coach she's a speaker she's a mindfulness uh, living conscious parenting coach and she is also doing her phd her name is arie Narozi. i think i said that right i hope i haven't butchered it completely <laughs> that's perfect awesome cool um and uh, this conversation is going to be really special we really want to try and add value to you a lot of the times we have certain things that we struggle with and they're quite personal we don't really like to discuss them it could be an addiction it could be anger management issues it could be the fact that you are just trying to discover your purpose in life and we're just not sure where to go you feel stuck you feel stagnant and you start to get frustrated so if this is the case with you where you feel stuck and you're feeling stagnant you're feeling frustrated because you're looking for the answers and the answers are just not appearing then this conversation is going to be for you so with that let's jump into our call with Arie Narozi Arie thank you so much for being here thank you for inviting me I'm glad to be here awesome so Arie I know that you're doing so many amazing things. You are a transformation coach. You are a speaker. You help the parents in terms of their parenting, conscious parenting, um, and you're also doing your PhD. So yes. can you tell me a little bit about how did you get started on this amazing journey? Sure, absolutely. So it was four years ago. I, I, I got a master's degree in computer engineering and I was working and things were going good. I had two kids and I had checked all the check boxes. Um, and uh, all of a sudden I resigned from my job and um, started looking for another job. But I felt in my heart that programming is not the thing that I want to doing and dying and you know, I, I felt there's, I needed more. I felt that was not my purpose. So I started asking the universe um, questions because I had no idea what, what a coach was and all those things. I started asking people, 20, 30 people, uh, of my family and friends, long time friends, uh, 20, 30 years. What am I good at? So I started researching and searching, soul searching and all those things. And, um, and the universe responded, and after a month, I um, just, uh, when I was started soul searching on the internet, I found this coaching company. I became the clients, and after some time, they uh, asked me to, be, to become a coach and get a uh, certification from them. And, um, and I did it, and I just left engineering, um, the corporate job, left it alone, and I said, no, this is it, this is, this is my purpose, because during the time, I, I really wanted, I had four criteria I remember. I, I wanted to help the world in a real meaningful way. I wanted to use my potentials. I wanted to um, really love what I do every day. And um, it all came through. So um, what I'm doing right now, and after that I just took so many other courses uh, during the past four years, and I started my PhD in performance psychology, researching mindfulness. So. Um, I'm, I think I, I have found my purpose and I'm, uh, um, I'm doing what I wanted to do to help the world and help myself and help my family at the same time. So, um, yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's great. Um, my question to the people in the audience is, can you relate to Arya's story? She had a corporate job. She had a family. She had ticked all the boxes. 
but yet there was a gap. She felt empty. She wanted to do more. She wanted to make a bigger impact. Is that you? Are you in the same sort of space where you want to make a bigger impact? And you, are you trying to find your life's purpose? And a lot of times I noticed that the guests come on and they talk about how they found their purpose. And it usually comes from a place from where they started to serve others. Arya, was that true for you that when you really started to serve others, that's when you really discovered your purpose? Exactly. Yeah. So that my number one was actually to serve, serve um, the world, humanity, help. It's just, I, like what I did was, was programming in a, I think it was a, a supplemental book company. I was helping kids, but it was not meaningful to me. It was, I wanted more tangible help, more, more tangible service. So um, I really do believe helping others gives us a better, and it's, uh, you, you're living your life with a, with a higher purpose. It has more meaning when you do that. So uh, actually that's the last stages of transformation, human, hum, human transformation, being in service. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and you, as we were talking before we started recording, you said that you actually help other people discover their purpose. And this is something I think a lot of people struggle with. They have been programmed from a very young age to follow a certain path. So they go ahead and they tick all the boxes. They go to the university, they get a job, they start a family. But then there's still that gap that empty because they don't feel happy inside. They don't feel fulfilled. So do you, do you have any uh, strategies that maybe you can share with us on how other people can go ahead and discover their purpose in life? Yes. So the number one um, step you have to take is just question everything. Question everything. In my culture, you had to be either like a lawyer or, an or a doctor or an engineer. Like why? Why do we need degrees to be happy? Why do we even need to, to uh, have kids or get married? Why do we like even the very simple things? Question them. Ask, is this my, for my higher bet, you know, for my higher good? Um, and I do believe that we all have the answers in ourselves at all times. And it resides here. What resides here is uh, ego mechanism and all these societal and um, the condition that we got from our parents and culture and society. Uh, but here in our hearts, it's really pure. The trick is to quiet this mind and just connect. So one of the tools that I teach my clients that is very scientific comes from the Heart Math Institute uh, that they um, uh, research about the heart, the electromagnetic heart around, uh, field around the heart. And you just put your hand on your heart. You can do it right now. And take two, three deep breaths through your nose and out your mouth. And when you sink into your heart, just ask the question and get the answer. It works miraculously. It's just, um, I have experimented with this um, because I have a scientific mind. And I found out that I actually could guess one number out of 50 numbers. And my kids wrote it on a piece of paper and I actually could find that number. We all have the answers. We do. No one believes it because we were not taught. So we were not taught in school, in public school system with our parents because they didn't know themselves. So we all have the answers, all the answers, really. Um, it's just the trick is to quiet the mind. Eliminate the shoulds, eliminate the shouldn'ts why something should be as soon as we use the word should just what the work of Brian Katie flip it say shouldn't or flip the pronoun for example my my child shouldn't throw a tantrum at this time you flip it my my child should throw a tantrum because she can't just contain her emotions she doesn't have the self-regulation capability in her brain her brain is not going to be developed until 25 years old so um just allowing ourselves to question all these um, boxes, like open them, destroy the boxes, like the movie Matrix. Get, take the red pill, get out of the Matrix. So um, even the things that it's just, there's no way, I, I, it, that's it, I have to do this. Again, question that. So by doing this and strengthening that muscle, we become uh, um, kind of, uh, we become ready to access 
that inherent knowledge, that inherent wisdom that uh, we have within ourselves because, and this is all proven by quantum mechanics. This is not just, uh, it, it is experiential. Everyone can experience it, but it, it is also proven uh, by um, new physics. Not, I'm not talking about, you know, new, Newtonian physics, but the past hundred years. So, yeah. Well, that's great. Um, I love your answer and uh, just how, how much in detail you went there. Now, I, I can actually relate to, to a lot of the stuff you said because that was my story as well. I was you know, young, I, had, I was very ambitious, I still am. And um, to do that, I followed the traditional path. I went to school, I went to college, I went to university, I got my degree, finished university, and uh, that's actually when the recession happened in 2009. That's when I graduated from university. And then it was a question of, well, let's get a job, right? Let's get a good job. Because you've got a university degree, I should be able to get a good job. That didn't quite go according to plan. <laughs> um, but now, uh, as, as it is, you know, I, I, I do have a full-time job as a math lecturer. That's what I do. Um, but there was still something missing, right? So there's something else. Uh, I'm very ambitious. I'm very hungry. I wanted to make an impact. I wanted to help people. I wanted to share everything that I'm learning. And that's how this channel came about. Um, so that's kind of like the story behind this channel, but also my story. And I can absolutely relate to that. And I'm wondering how many people in the audience can also relate to this story right now. Um, and the other great thing you absolutely mentioned there was, you know, just be curious and ask questions, question everything. I think that's, that's a great strategy. That's, that's beautiful. When you start to question absolutely everything, you start to almost change the, the, the paradigm inside your mind that, that's been programmed. Um, you, you start to look at things in a completely different way. So when you started asking those questions for yourself, how what did the journey look like that you first started asking questions and that actually led you to down the path of discovering your purpose? So what, what did that period look like? So um, I think it's um, Paulo Coelho in the, 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 the alchemist, the book mm. says uh, when you have a wish or a dream, I'm just butchering the quote, but the universe will conspire to make it happen. So it's, it's really a, for example, one of the, the ways that I really highly recommend is journaling. For, of course, meditation, but journaling. Just em when we empty ourselves from the agenda, from the shoes and chitons, from the boxes of society and everything, we, we become this empty vessel to receive the universal knowledge, universal wisdom. So um, that was my thing. So I had my first intention what to, was actually, I had only three, four criteria. Mm. I wanted to help. I wanted to love what I do. I didn't know about what kind of job I'm going to have, what kind of profession, but the universe put it on my, you know, on my lap, really. I didn't know. I just had the intention. That much detail, the more details you have, the better. But that was the extent of the details that I had. I just wanted to help. I really didn't know what to do uh, at that point. So, um, it's, it just starts from the first step, just asking and just emptying whatever we have. So there's this parable that I love. Um, this person went to this guru and said, I want to be enlightened. And the guru said, hey, okay, let's have tea. And uh, the guru pours the, the, the tea from the teapot to the cup. It keeps pouring and keeps pouring and keeps pouring and overflows and just makes everywhere wet. And the, the student says, what are you doing? And the guru says, this is you. You're too full. I can't give you it. You have to empty yourself. So that's the number one thing to do, just to, to, be, to be able to open and just say, okay, I'm empty. I'm ready to receive. If you're not empty, we can't receive. So when we have that little of tickle, okay, I want to do something, and that, that little inspiration, that's the time to empty ourselves, to meditate, to journal, to figure out what's going on, to access that wisdom, and just ask, and it is given. You will receive the answer. Like um, Joe Vitale, he's, uh, he's one of the guys in the secret movie who's actually involved with the coaching company that I got my certificate from. He says, order from the catalog of the universe. It's truly that. We just order. 
we don't know exactly what, but we, we act, at least know about the emotion of what we, what we are receiving, right? For example, I want a big house. What kind of emotion I want? I don't, you know, I don't have to say, okay, here, here's the street, I want this, this house here, but about the emotion or the job that I wanted to have, I really wanted to feel fulfilled. I wanted to feel that I'm living my potential. That was the feeling. I was familiar with it. I wasn't actually too familiar because I didn't know what it was, but some, something inside me told me, hey, I don't want to do programming until I die. That was it. That was very loud and clear. Mm -hmm. So... It's just, again, coming to ourselves by different tools like journaling, meditating, uh, going to, you know, to nature and actually see the nature. It's so funny because I walk here, um, we live beside the ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and I, walk, I run every other day. And there are days that I really, truly don't see the ocean. There are just one or two. I'm like, hey, look at the ocean. It's hear the sound. Like when you run, don't put this in your ear hear the nature sound so by doing that we become empty nature's empty. nature is in the flow we want to come to the flow and if you're so full how can we be in the flow that nothing will flow to through us because you're so full we're so blocked so that's why it's so essential to do at least 10 minute mindfulness meditation which is just sitting and focusing on the breath somewhere on your chest or under the nostrils thought comes just say hey here's a thought Bye-bye, go back to breath. Hey, here's a thought. It's like a cloud on the sky. I'm not the cloud. Let it pass. Go to your breath. That's, that's the way you're training your brain to do the same thing. As soon as a thought comes, I should do this. Or, I don't know, my kid makes me angry. My spouse makes me angry. Okay, you just create a space. Um, in, in your space, there's power, right? So you can choose instead of reacting. You're training your brain to just create space between all these thoughts that unfortunately, unfortunately, they are mostly negative and fear-based. And research shows that, and I think it's much more, with, we do mind-wandering 50% of our, of our daily life, like all over the place. I think it's much more, but this is what the research says. And mostly they're negative. And that's what causes, what causes diseases. That's, that's what causes aging um, and all sorts of things. So, um, so I went through the rabbit hole, but really it all boils down to mindfulness. When we are empty and we just want something, we get the inspiration, we ask, we receive. That's it's that simple. I love that answer. And the, the, the amount of detail you went into, it's absolutely phenomenal. All the strategies that you shared were, were absolutely amazing. And again, I'm going to ask the people in the audience right now, do you feel as if you're stuck in the matrix? You're just going through the motions every single day and every single day is just a copy of the previous day. And the next day is the copy of the previous day. And it, is, is, if that is the place where you are at, then the strategies that Arya just shared um, are absolutely amazing. You, you talked first, first and foremost about emptying your mind and making sure that you create space so that answers can, can present themselves, right? Solutions can present themselves. And um, you took it further. You talked about journaling. You talked about being in nature. You talked about just being curious and asking questions. You went further and you actually talked about mindfulness meditation and you actually gave us the breakdown of how to carry it out. And, and that was absolutely fantastic. So people, if you want to escape the matrix, then here are the strategies that will help you escape the matrix. So um, Arya, when we look at mindfulness meditation and, and I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan, right? I, I, I meditate. However, something really interesting you said there, and I, I've never been able to make that connection before. I don't know why. Um, so because I have been meditating for, for a while now, but I've never made that connection. And it's the connection between using meditation to actually get solutions. I never made, never made that connection. Like I meditate to just like wind down, to like relax, chill out, you know, empty my mind, you know, all those kind of things. But I've never made the connection like, hey, if I want to search for a solution, I want to ask better questions. I want to solve this issue. I need to quieten my mind first. I need to use meditation in a more directed way. Yes. And, and yes. that's really powerful. 
Yes, yes. So you're, so you're using mindfulness. So I love mantra meditations. I've been doing TM for the past 25 years. Uh, you know what TM is, Transcendental Meditation, when you repeat a mantra. I love chanting. I do chanting every day. I do all sorts of things. But mindfulness meditation, 10 minutes of it at least, is essential because we're training the brain to do the same thing in the waking hours. So it's, it's a mechanism that we are, because we are not mindful inherently. We are not because our ego takes over all the time. We have around how many thoughts do you think a day? Oh, it's, it's a crazy number. Like it's like between forty thousand and seventy thousand. Yes, like yes, that. exactly. Yeah. Average of fifty thousand. So 30, thirty thoughts a minute. So I just dropped something off my table. Yes. I don't know what it is. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so um, thirty thoughts a day, which is usually based on worry and fear. And don't take my word for it. Just monitor it. Monitor it one two minutes. See, most of them are free, fear based. And because they're coming from the past, regrets from the past, and plans for the future. None of them exist. So that's why we have to pull ourselves to the present moment by being present with what we eat, what we think, what we do. So we're just pulling ourselves from the past and future to the present moment. And that's how we become empty because the agenda comes from past and future. Present moment doesn't have any agenda. Present moment is just, I don't know, a collar or a chair. There is no agenda in a chair if you look at it really attentively. So um, what you just said right now, um, actually Einstein, the way he found solutions to his problems, um, he, um, I know I, I went to, to a spiritual center this Sunday. This is very fresh in my mind, so I can tell you exactly. In one, one year, he had five big problems that he solved. And he just had the problems. He had a couple of solutions for every problem, but he didn't know which one because it's mathematics, right? You don't know. So what he did, he looked at, he, he sat in front of the mirror and he looked at Alps. Like he just stared at Alps, the mountains. He just stared, stared, and he got the solution intuitively. I said that this. So you are absolutely right. The more we meditate, the more we empty ourselves, as I said at the beginning, we have all the answers. We just have to uh, tap into it. You have to access it. And this is again, I, I don't want to tell you how I did it because it's kind of spooky, but take my words for it because I'm, I'm an engineer. I'm very, very scientific. I'm like, I was like, if this, this is, I can't touch this, it doesn't exist. I was like this. But right now, we don't know that between me and the computer, there are trillions of stuff going on. This is not empty space. As I said, this is science. This is quantum mechanics say that. And this, this has intelligence. Again, the scientists proved that this empty space has intelligence and we just tap into it and we are the same thing. We are mostly space. So we are really intelligent. We are part of this interconnected universe. The same way that everything is so intelligent and so orderly. Look at the seasons, look at the number of the leaves and look at the way our human body is like a miracle. We have that knowledge in us because we're part of it. Mm. But we can't just access it because no one taught us that. And like the society and the, and the school system told us the answer is out there. Go to school and get your degree, get a job. Everything is out there. But no one told us every, everything is in here, whatever we need. So you're absolutely right to find solutions, to, to get inspired, to, to find the correct course of action. We just have to tap in here. And the way to do it is to just dismantle the ego, dismantle the mind. And connect to heart because that's that's where the wisdom literally lies mm. yeah that's so interesting um and again i, I want to reach out to the audience here and uh, you know ask the question are you meditating are you incorporating any any type of meditation really whether that's transcendental meditation which is mantra based or that's mindfulness meditation or any other type of meditation but are you meditating um so some of the some of the top performers in the world actually say that they wouldn't be at that level if they weren't meditating i mean just look at uh tim ferris's book tools of titans where he's interviewed some of the you know best performers in the world in their field you know who are elite in their field and he said that 80 percent of them meditated or had some sort of meditation practice incorporated in their daily routine. And this is the key word 
daily routine. It's not a one-off thing. It, the answers are not going to come to you if you sit there, cross your legs, and close your eyes, and you know, focus on your breathing for a couple of minutes and expect the answers to appear. No, it's a daily thing. Would you agree with that, Arya? That, it, that you have to do it consistently in order to actually get to the level where you're able to quieten your your thoughts, your mind, and you are able to then go beyond what, whatever is kind of happening at that moment in time, all the thoughts, all the worries, all the concerns, all the fears, and you're able to go beyond that. Yes, of course. So uh, first of all, I wanted to mention something. We don't go through meditation with any expectation. Mm. So as I said, this is a style of living. So um, we literally need to be living our life mindfully all the time but the way to do to make it happen is to have at least 10 to 20 minutes a day so we're training our brain so we don't have any expectations we don't go through the meditation with the expectation of finding, finding an answer we don't do that um, so it's part of living kind of but the side effect of it is that we get the answers you know what I mean so we don't want to do we don't want to meditate so because of mindfulness meditation and all these teachings the wisdom teachings is that just B, all is good at all times. We want to get to that level. Mm -hmm. And then that doesn't mean non-action, not at all. That doesn't mean not non-achieving. That doesn't mean that. But, but being in the present moment and being in the flow, the next inspired action will just flourish out of the blue. And we just take it non-effortlessly. I mean, effortlessly. Non -effortless. Effortlessly, you know what I mean? So it's um, so that's that's number one and number two um, of course daily routine is the most important thing is the most uh, essential tool to, to personal growth um, growth uh, I think Jim Rohn says um, or some of these big coaches he said people say why daily motivation why motivation doesn't last and he says well um, so does um, taking a shower or taking a bath that's why we recommend it daily. So we have to do all these things. We have to read some book according, you know, related to personal development. We have to meditate. We have to participate in discussions. We have to teach. Uh, teach our kids. Teach our spouses. That's what I tell my clients. Like these things that I'm teaching you, teach your kids. Because we want to raise um, conscious adults. We're not raising kids. We're not just getting them to brush their teeth at this time. That's not a problem to fix, to be fixed. Uh, right now, what you're doing, you're teaching how to live and how to raise a conscious child. So you teach about these things to your kids, to your spouses. What else? You can read. You can watch a lot of awesome video clips about all these things, um, personal development. Watch every day, at least 10, 20 minutes a day. So I have a spreadsheet for my clients. I tell them, how many minutes did you do? Did you invest in yourself, in your personal development? What did you watch? What did you read? Did you meditate? So it's important to do it every day. You're absolutely right. Because uh, I think it's another, I don't, I'm very bad with memory. Another um, tycoon, he said, he brought um, a pump. And he said, you, when you, at the beginning, when the water wants to come up, you have to push really hard and often, right? It's called priming. But then when the, the water is at the top level, then you can do slowly and it comes effortlessly. Right. So we don't if we do everything every day, we don't have to prime every time, like do five, five, you know, for, I don't know, two, three days you meditate and you don't meditate for one week and then you have to prime again. It's harder if you do it every day. It's more effective and it's easier. Mm. And, and, and I, you're, you're so right. And I think we've all been there where we have taken up a habit. We have continued it for a while, whether that's going to the gym or, you know, um, say working out or, you know, reading or anything like that. We've taken up a habit and we've stuck with it for a bit and then we've stopped and then it was really hard to get started yes. again because you yes. lost all the momentum that you had up. So it's the fact that every single day you're building momentum, you're trying to go faster and faster and faster. And eventually what I'm hearing you say is the fact that even though when you talk about the water coming out of the pump quite easily, that, that, that shows to me that you gain so much momentum that you're going so fast that you can't be stopped. Exactly. Yes. And then stop it again, you're going to go down. It's just the research shows if you exercise, for example, for two hours a week, one time, it's not as effective and not helpful if you do it like 30 minutes a day. That's mm -hmm. better. 
So, um, yeah, it's just so it's important to, and it's part of self-care. Again, that's a huge part of coaching, self-care, because we don't, we don't, we just want to give to people from our overflow of energy. And if this is part of the self-care, this half an hour, I have to exercise, I have to meditate, it's non-negotiable, sorry. Mm. So you say no to this, no to this, no to this, but yes to this. Um, it's important to do that because we, don't, we can't pour from an empty cup if you don't invest. And having massages and stuff, manicures are good, but having something daily, it's so important. And this is the most precious exercise practice to so just meditate and exercise and um three things good thoughts good exercise and good food take care of what we put in our in our mouth of course it's it's more could be more expensive to buy organic but it's invest it's an investment it's the energy we put in ourselves and the universe will give it back so yeah guys the the commitment to come here and and serve you is real and that's what i try to do every single week to try and come here show up and add value to you which is why i try and look for the most amazing guests that i can possibly bring on so we can learn from them we can we can incorporate the strategies the tips the routines the hacks into our lives to accelerate our lives and i think it like aria has been so on point today with the fact that if you want to achieve anything in your life, in any area of your life, by the way, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's finance, it's relationships, your personal life, it's your spirituality, it's your business, whatever it is that you want to work on, you first need to look after yourself. And in order to do that, you need to escape the matrix, the, the worries, the concerns, the consistent thoughts that are always in your head, those voices that just never go quiet. So you have to make sure that you take the time to do that. You quiet those voices, you escape the matrix. And she shared some amazing strategies with you guys to help you escape the matrix. Arie, you've added so much value to us today. I mean, this has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, I'm, I'm curious right now, if, if there was only one, one thing that people could act on, one tip that you can leave us with, what would it be? Well, I said meditation so much. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a given, right? I, I shouldn't have even asked. That's that a given. I was just like, yeah, it should just meditate. <laughs> That's a given. That's a given. But something came up. Maybe I should, some of your audience could be um, helpful for them. So for, you brought up relationships. I highly recommend take care of you first. Like the, for the people who are looking for a partner or something, we don't want like, this is a Hollywood false message. You complete me. No one completes us. So we, as I said, we are complete within ourselves because we are divine. We are connected to this vast intelligence of the universe. So um, just taking care of ourselves and by meditating and by um, accessing the purpose of our lives, by just enjoying the minutes, um, uh, every minute of our, of our daily life, do something for our personal growth. That will bring us so much satisfaction that no one else and nothing else can bring us. So it's, it's just a false message that a society gives. You have to do things. You have to be something. So you're accepted. So someone chooses you. And that's not true. If we feel at peace, because of law of attraction, we are elevating the vibration of of our um of our being and we are extracting the same vibration which is higher love um love and above is uh, the from the scale of consciousness love joy peace and alignment if we pull ourselves to these higher vibration emotions rather than guilt and shame and not enough and all this things are very low vibration when you're looking for someone you're not enough you have low vibration when you don't have a job there's like a lack of vibration we want to pull ourselves up and because of law of attraction, we're going to attract, and this is again scientific, and I give, can give you actually a scientific experiment about it. We're going to attract the same kind of vibration. What happens then if we are meant to be with a person? Again, no one has to, not everyone has to be with a partner, but if you're meant to, the same, you know, the person will show up. If you're meant to have a kid, the kid will show up. So if the, you're meant to have this job, it's for our personal growth and for, high, for our higher good and the higher good of humanity, 
it will show up because we are vibrating on a higher level. We are attracting effortless, joyful, peaceful, um, essence-based, um, abundant events, people, circumstances. Does that make sense? So it's just all us. We have to work on ourselves so the environment changes. And that's, again, psychology 101. It's not even a spirituality. So focus on you. <laughs> that's my last. <laughs> yes, yes. No, I, 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 I completely hear you. Um, you know, they say when you change the way you look at things, it changes the things you look at. So it's very important that you first change the way you are looking at things. So you need to work on yourself. That's what I'm hearing you say right now. You need to work on yourself. We all need to work on ourselves and change the, the perspective, the paradigm that's, that's going on inside of us all the time in order to actually move forward. Because if you stay in the same place, you're not going forward. You're just in a hamster wheel. You're just going spinning round and round. And it does not matter what area of your life you're focusing on. I mean, on this channel, we, we talk about all all areas of our life, right? Like so we talk about holistic success. How do you achieve holistic success? Does not matter if it's to do with business, spirituality, it's to do with your health, it's to do with your, um, you know, relationships, it's to do with your finances, your career, does not matter. How do you achieve holistic success? So what I'm hearing you say is that you have to work on yourself in order to move forward because you cannot stay stuck in the same hamster wheel going round and round all the time. No, we can, but it's not us. It's a false self. Mm. If you want to live our authentic self, we have to work on, we have to shed all these conditioning like a snake. We have to shed our past. And we are literally living off all those programs that have been instilled in us up to almost six years old even, mm. maybe 12. So we have to just, um, let's forget our parents, forgive our parents because they didn't know better, but it is what it is. It's the, the, the caregivers and then the society, then the school. We have to just shed these by working ourselves and by watching the material. I'm going to recommend the, the movie. It's on YouTube. Uh, it's called Samadhi, S-A-M-A-D-H-I. Samadhi. So if you search Samadhi, there are two parts in YouTube. It's free. It's one hour each. That's, in, that's those kind of um, clips. Watch every day or um, the stuff with Joe, Dr. Joe Dispenza, his TED, TED Talk, how to reprogram the brain because of neuroplasticity, we can actually change. Mm -hmm. Up until 30 years ago, we thought, okay, it is what it is. Our brain cannot be changed, but that's not true. We know that we can actually, but we need to do work. As you said, daily, read, watch. It takes time, but it's, it, it is so rewarding. The journey is beautiful. So there is no destination. We're going to enjoy the journey. And, um, and we're going to cross this river. This river we're here, we don't know what's going on. I, I literally, four years ago, I felt I woke up. I was asleep and I woke up. For real. That's, that's how we shift our perspective. It's, um, I was just watching the movie Awake by, um, about Yogananda uh, biography. And they said, that when we're sleeping, when we're, we're dreaming, we think that's the reality. And then we wake up, and then this is the reality. But the same thing can happen when we take the red pill and we get out of the matrix. That's not the reality. This is the reality. I'm enough. I'm divine. We are all connected. There is no ism. There is no good or bad. Rumi says, beyond the wrongdoing and the right doing, there is a field. I meet you there. There is no good or bad. There is no black and white. There is no short and we're all the same. We're all divine. We are all just part of this interconnected universe. So looking at the world this way, we don't judge. We don't expect. We, ex we accept the person's consciousness. Not everyone is at the same level of consciousness. Because why? Because we're asleep. I was asleep four years ago. So we just have to wake up and do work to wake up and feel joy the true joy yeah. that we actually came here to live we, i believe we came here to play but no one is playing literally everyone is you know look at all the misery in the world personal and communal so um we, we came here to to have fun so 
You should find a way to have joy and peace at every moment. We don't, we don't deserve this. We don't deserve to be in suffering. Mm, right? I love that message. I love that mm. message. Yeah. And uh, again, you know, I, I, I asked the people in the audience, what beliefs, what thoughts, what ideas are holding you back? What thoughts, what ideas, what beliefs are actually not serving you any more? And are you going to stay here where you hold on to them like extra baggage while in fact you need to be sprinting forward to the finish line so you can achieve your full potential, you can grow to become the best version of yourself and serve others? And if you feel that gap, you're not feeling true joy and happiness in your life, then maybe it's time to think about letting go of those limiting beliefs, letting go of those ideas and, and those thoughts who, which are not serving you anymore. And again, you know, Arya shared some amazing insights into how you can do that. But the key thing that I, I got from this conversation from Arya was consistency. It's a daily thing. It's not a one-time thing. It's not a weekly thing. It's not a six-week program. It's a lifetime journey. So the question really is, are you ready to embark on your journey? Arya, thank you so much uh, for your time. Before we just quickly finish off, uh, I just want to know, um, how can people reach out to you? How can they find out more about you? Sure. Uh, my website is www be love no b e love k n o w dot com uh and the facebook my pu public facebook page is again the same thing if you search be love no instagram twitter uh, linkedin all those things <laughs> right just it's, it's a it's just be love no yes be like be and then love and then no <laughs> so. awesome awesome Perfect. Um, I'll put all those links below in the description of the video so people can actually click on the link and reach directly out to you. And I will highly encourage people to do that because I think this conversation was centered around how you can move forward and not be stuck in where you are at. Because a lot of times that's how we feel. That's a lot of times sometimes how I feel, but it's about letting go. It's about moving forward and it's about making sure that you are not holding on to anything that's not serving you anymore. Yes. We're so good at that, right? We're so good at holding on to everything. It's like, oh no, I can't let go of this because I have nothing else. But unless you let that go, you're not creating the space for something else to grow. Yes. I want to ask that Deanne teach you something. If you put your right hand on your forehead and close your, your fingers and one at the back and just stay for one, two minutes, this will quiet down and all those neurons and everything. It's, it's amazing for the time that you're just feeling anxious and just pull yourself to the, to the center. This is energy medicine routine by Donna Eden. Again, you can find it on YouTube. It's really amazing. My kids do it every morning. Um, it's just taking care of our body and our mind at the same time so we can live our, you know, our best self every day. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, Aria, is there anything that we can help you with right now? No, <laughs> all is good at all times. That's my motto. <laughs> Perfect. Um, just very quickly, I know that you are doing a dissertation for your PhD and you're actually looking for people to participate in that as well. Um, so do you, do you want to tell people a little bit about your dissertation in case somebody might be interested and they want to reach out to you? Sure. Uh, thank you for, for doing that. Um, yeah, but it's not ready yet. I have to um, defend my first three chapters, but as soon as it's ready, I'm going to create an event page on Facebook and then I'll probably send it to you or put it under this video. Um, so I will be inviting people who are, who work at least 20 hours a week. Uh, I'll teach them in a, in a 50 minute video, how to do mindful breathing every hour on the hour and then, um, fill out a questionnaire at the end. Um, to, to tell me about their experiences. Thank you. Right. Yeah, no uh, for, for people in the audience, um, Arya is actually doing a PhD right now. She's doing, working on her dissertation. And the reason I said that is because um, she is looking, she's going to be looking for people to participate in that so she can, um, you know, get, get the data that she needs. So it's based around um, 
you know, performance psychology, specifically, obviously, your mental performance. Uh, and she will be teaching you different mindfulness practices, etc., that you can practice in order to boost your performance. And then you, you just like fill it a questionnaire and, and uh, give your results back. So um, I, I think that's a fantastic opportunity for you to just reach out and connect with REA and be a part of something absolutely amazing. You'll be actually helping create uh, a new study. You'll be part of this new sort of discovery into, you know, mindfulness practices and how they actually help you boost your mental performance. Exactly. So because I, yes, because most of my clients are like, oh, 10 minutes, I don't have time, 20 minutes. I'm like, okay, you don't have time for 10 minutes sitting. Just every hour, close your eyes for one minute. That you can do. That's not too, too much. So, um, so it, I like to experiment with this and see how, how effective it could be for people. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Awesome. Uh, well, Aria, thank you so much for being here. Um, I really appreciate your time. Um, and you know what? I'm really looking forward to round two. There's so much more that we can talk about and explore. But obviously, we have time restrictions, so we have to <laughs> end it here. But I, I really can't wait to have you back on. and Maybe we can go for round two sometime. Yeah, thank you. I'll be happy to come back. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> Guys, make sure that you subscribe to the channel because guess what? The channel competition, I've decided I'm going to run every single month. So what that means is that if you go and hit that subscribe button down below and leave a comment anywhere on any video on the channel, doesn't matter what video it is, and I get a notification, you automatically get entered into the channel competition. And at the end of the month, well, the start of the next month. So the 1st of October, basically, we're now in September. So on the 1st of October, I will announce the winner and the winner will get free access to my new networking strategies course. These are the strategies that I have used to connect and build relationships with amazing people all over the world and bring them onto my YouTube channel to interview and to add value to you. So if you're interested in learning those strategies, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now and leave a comment on this video or any other video. Now, we would love to know your thoughts. What is the one thing from this conversation that really stood out to you, that you will be employing moving forward? So there you go, I've even prompted you to leave a comment right now. And also the fact we're approaching our 100th video mark. And I'm just really curious, what would you like to see for the 100th video? Or what guest you like to be featured on the channel? What guest kind of bring back who you thought was absolutely amazing, who you thought added most value to you. And I love to bring the guest back on for the 100th video. We're in the, like, the early 90s right now, like 91, 92 videos, something like that. And we're approaching the 100th mark, which is going to be a really big thing for the channel. So I want to make sure that the 100th video is absolutely amazing and I want to add value to you, which is always my goal. So make sure that in the comments, you go ahead and you tell me what, which guest do you want me to feature in the 100th video? And as always, guys, thank you so much for spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. Um, you cannot even begin to imagine just how much it makes me happy to come here and serve you every single week. And I put in a lot of work behind the scenes to connect with different people, um, to, to actually bring them onto the channel and try and add value to you. and you know, share with you everything that I'm learning. And I'm, I'm on the same journey, guys. I'm no different to you guys. I'm on a journey. And it's just an absolute blessing to be surrounded by all these people who we can actually learn from so we can accelerate our lives. So I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic week. Make sure you hustle hard like it says back there, which means you go ahead and you move past all the obstacles that are holding you and you make sure that you hit your goals. Now, with that, thank you so much. I'll catch you in the next one.